Report finds the United Kingdom's forced marriage unit overly targets Muslims. In a hard-hitting new report, the UK government's faith advisor, Colin Bloom, has launched a scathing critique of the government's forced marriage unit, accusing it of disproportionately targeting Muslim communities. This report, commissioned by ex-Prime Minister Boris Johnson, criticizes the agency, branding it as, quote, under-resourced and poorly led and highlighting that forced marriages are a widespread issue reaching beyond Muslim communities and into the Orthodox, excuse me, Orthodox Jewish groups and others. The report also criticizes the government for failing Muslims and calling for an end to the stigmatization of the Muslim community. The review proposed several policy changes, including introducing Sharia compliant student loans, mandatory religious training for officials, investigating extremism in the Sikh community, and a campaign to recruit more Muslims into the armed forces. This provocative report has stirred the pot, with religious leaders wide, excuse me, largely welcoming the findings, while some critics, like the CEO of Humanists UK, Andrew Copson, argued that it, quote, elevates religion and religious groups onto a pedestal. So let me give some background. Uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, back in the day, ordered this report, which is basically kind of the largest review on the government's religious policies across a wide variety of branches of the government. Um, it's, it's one of the largest that they've had in a generation. And this report got delayed many times because of the pandemic, and then finally this report has been released. And it's very, very comprehensive, and there's a lot of different topics that it covers. Um, that are very, very juicy, but we're just going to cover a few. So the main ones that I wanted to talk about was how they criticized the forced marriage unit in the UK for its failings in actually preventing forced marriages. And then this advisor is also saying that they overly target Muslims with the forced marriage unit. They're not adequately providing resources for other <clears throat> religious communities or it has too much of an Islamic angle. And then the other major finding for the report is that this report says that British Muslims are made to feel like they are, have to apologize for Islamic terrorism constantly. And that this stigmatizes them and makes them feel guilty and makes them feel basically excluded from the fold of British society because of this expectation that's always on their head. And to paraphrase the report, it says like this kind of violence is as abhorrent to British Muslims as the actions of what's his name, Anders Breivik, whatever, is as abhorrent to British Christians, right? But when Anders Breivik goes and does his, you know, horrific acts, we don't turn to British Christians and go, well, how do you explain yourself, right? So this report is basically saying that Muslims feel stigmatized by this um, expectation of like renunciation, essentially. And it also talks about a lot of changes that the government should make to try to integrate British Muslims into the country more, which I thought were really interesting. And one of them is that they purposefully want to recruit more British Muslims into the military. And th for example, they there's only 0.5% Muslims in the military or armed forces, but Muslims actually represent like 6.5% of the British population. And one thing that I feel very conflicted about is that they explicitly recommend that there are either the government or they create policies where it is possible to create Sharia compliant student loans. With the idea wow. being that there are roughly 12,000 every year, I think it was something like 12,000 British Muslims do not attend higher education because the construction of the loans is actually considered sinful to them. So they're not going into higher education and they're not getting those skills and then they're not getting the economic benefits and social mobility that comes with that. So that's keeping a certain segment of society for lack of a better term that I can't think of right now, like ghettoized, right? And so Armin, what do you think about the idea of establishing Sharia compliant student loans? This 
Okay, I'm just thinking out loud. Okay, mm -hmm. don't get don't get too angry when I'm saying this. Maybe it's a good thing because okay, we have limited spots anyways, and those spots are gonna get full, right? It's not so maybe it's a good thing that these people who have these beliefs are filtering themselves out. But then they're not yeah. getting exposed to contrary ideas. Well, I mean, yeah. That's exactly the type of person that needs to be exposed to new ideas. If they're that strict. But mm, I mean, do you do you go to universities to get, I mean, exposed to new ideas? It's not like when you go to university to learn engineering, they're also like hit, hitting you with a heavy dose of liberalism. They're just telling you how to do engineering. Do you know what I mean? I know, like, but when I went to the university, I was exposed to just new people. And those new people brought a depth yeah. of perspective into my life that I did not remotely have beforehand. You it's be not right. literally you be about right. education. It's about all the interactions that come with it, right? Okay, okay, maybe. Yeah, but okay, but you're right, but the solution is not Sharia. <laughs> like Sharia compliant laws. Sharia! Sorry. The answer, here's the here's the thing. You're right, that's the problem, but the answer is never Sharia. <laughs> okay, Sharia is not the answer. <laughs> All right. So if you think like should we do should we do more Islam? Is that what we need right now? No. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the answer. Okay. Um also this nag this complaint about like I think a lot of this complaining is unjustified. I mean you do be having more of a problem. I mean, yeah, do the do the Sikh community has a problem? Yeah, do the like Hindu community has a problem? But maybe the, your community is being highlighted more. Maybe because there is these problems exist more within your community. Okay, and do our people mass generalizing and like attributing this to every single person in that community? And that's wrong. Yes, but again, we to avoid that. That doesn't mean that we should ignore. We shouldn't be targeting your community more, given that you have more of a problem. So, this is a side product of highlighting the fact that you have the you have this problem more than other communities. It's a negative side product is that people will attribute that to Muslims who don't even have this problem. Yeah, sure, but the answer is not to like, oh, let's do equal, let's target every community equally for even if it, even if the problem is not equal. That's mm -hmm. not the answer. That's not the answer. And also, like, well, when the Christian community, when they are like, when when we have Christian people doing bad things, we don't ask the Christian community to be um, to renounce that and um, call it out. Uh, okay, well, maybe we should. <laughs> I don't know. But, like, do you want us to call? Maybe do you want us? Is your are you asking to lay off of you, or how about instead for consistency? How about we not go to both communities? Like, hey guys, you seem to have, you guys seem to be having a problem. So if we have, like, I mean, we do do that. Who says we don't do that? So we have a lot of problems coming from Christian communities, and we highlight that all the time. Well, we, we do highlight Armin, that even more. About society as a whole, does society of a this, whole have that consistency? Not really. Let's be honest. <laughs> What, what are you talking about? People shit on Christians all the time for the shit that comes out of their community. Yeah. All the time. It's, it's at least in the US, for example, is a favorite pastime of people. Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> it's so normal. It's so normal here. I mean, maybe the reason why you don't notice it is because it's been so normalized that people don't even know how that it's just a, it's part of Western culture to shit on Christians. It's different though, Armin. It's poking fun and satirizing and mocking is different than holding an entire community accountable for the actions of one psycho. Okay. They do do that with Christians. Okay. They do do that. I mean, and both of it is unfair. Okay. Here's the thing. Let's, let's separate. I'm like, what are you two, saying? This these... isn't actually an attitude that you promote. I know you don't. I know you don't think that Muslims should have to answer for these kind of actions. That's why I'm gonna. That's why I was gonna say what I was just about to say. Okay, okay, because I think we're talking about two things as if they're the same thing. Okay, there's one attitude is like, oh, that Muslim guy did that. You're a Muslim, you're accountable. Or that Christian guy did that. You're a Christian, you're accountable. 
that is wrong okay that is not the attitude that we should should we ha be having okay but that's different from hey guys your community seems to be having a problem okay can we talk about that is there something that we could encourage you to have more access to these people than we do is there something that could be done about that for example if we had for ex let's say that we had a major racism problem within the atheist community okay if somebody came to me or susanna like susanna atheists seem to be having a racism problem what do you have to say for yourself that is unfair that is unfair Susanna is not a racist, okay? Even if she's an atheist, right? But if they came to Susanna and said, like, Susanna, atheists seem to be having a racism problem, right? And you seem to be managing an atheist community yourself. Is there something we could, we could work with each other here and do something about that? Given that you have an ac access to atheist community, given mm -hmm. the position that you have given the audience that you have given the connections that you have can we work with each other and maybe address this would you like us to do this together that would be fair mm -hmm. that so there's a difference between these two so does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah so, so the mm -hmm. yeah i think i think so we have to understand which one of these two we're talking about it's yeah. it's it's a good thing to go to the muslim community and tell them your community has this problem can we address that that's a good thing that is not holding that is not guilt by association mm -hmm. i just want to really? say one thing that was really interesting about this report is how much it emphasizes sikh extremism like oh. i know that's not the main thing we're here to talk about but I was, it really took me aback to see how much of the report was talking about the government's need to be more investigative towards Sikh extremism, which was really interesting to me because I'm like, it, it's the government putting that on the map in a whole new way. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, they're raising the profile on that concern. And they also talked about Hindu nationalism more in this report than I expected. So they're they're putting those on the map as points of concern alongside Islamic extremism in the UK. What do you think about that? I was like, whoa. Like I mean, did, actually, I support that. There was a lot devoted to the Sikh extremism. I think like 12 pages. You know, it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, these Muslim radicals. I wish they were more like the Hindu community. They don't, they'd be peaceful and they don't have any radicals and problems, you know? And they were like, oh, oh, no, wait, never mind. Okay, okay. Oh, the Sikhs, the Sikhs, everybody knows that every time I met a Sikh person, they're also very, uh, they're all very nice. Nobody, nobody has ever had a problem with the Sikh, okay? Sikh, they, that's the religion that's the religion that we atheists like like that's the one that we support okay yeah christians do evil things muslims like they have a lot of radical problems um hindus apparently we didn't know but hindus somebody seems to have that as well but the sikhs they be nice people and they're like oh wait a second All right, so maybe guys maybe we'd hold judgment until you actually know what you're talking about because yeah yeah these eastern religions that people were celebrating as alternative to uh, Abrahamic religions as um, as something that atheists could maybe support, they're all wrong. Yeah, so Sikh ex extremism is a thing, and it's big. It's a big. It's actually the first terror. The well, I don't know if the first. Yeah, no, no, the, no, 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 no. Give me a second. I'm going to bring that. Because Pakistani Defense Force is saying it's a political thing by India. There is no Sikh extremism. Well, the hundreds of civilians. Mm killed in yeah, canada's yeah. largest terrorist attack. i was gonna say those victims I was gonna say. differ i was yeah yeah I, I think he's confirming that but i was gonna say that you stole it from me i was like as a canadian i wanted to say that people telling me that sikhs are not extre extremist while the main terrorist attack on my country was a stream extremist attack so i take offense to that i don't actually but i will i take offense to that so i'm upset don't yeah i'm offended you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube
We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.